there's some of you out there that might be a little bit afraid of these synchronizers, thinking, well, that's too hard, I don't know how to do that. And the book isn't really very clear. The description in the service manual actually tells you what you need to do, but it's not exactly very clear. So here's what you need to do if you need to stab a synchronizer. We're working on a 99 Ford Ranger with a 4.0 engine. Now the timing on this vehicle is electronically controlled. It does not have a distributor. Now in the old distributors, you know you would stick this down, it would go into the oil pump, and as it rotates, then up the top, your rotor bug would turn around. Well, since we don't have a distributor, we have a cam synchronizer, it's very much the same. As this turns, it sticks down the same hole, goes onto the oil pump drive, but on the top, instead of a rotor, you can see as this turns, the wheel inside there that syncs up with the cam position sensor is the only thing that's moving. The teeth at the end of the camshaft are what actually turn the synchronizer. So the cam synchronizer synchronizes the movement of this wheel and reports that to the cam position sensor to the computer so it can adjust timing. So again, just like a distributor had to stick down into the hole in the top of the engine or the intake, the cam synchronizer has to do the same thing. So when you stab it in there, it has to be just at the right place and it has to be right on. There's no adjustment. You cannot rotate it. Now let me go back to the distributor. Now when we stab distributors, you want to set the engine at top dead center and you want this rotor to be pointing at the appropriate spark plug on the cap. So if this was number one, when you put the cap on, and if this was number one, you would be correct. You don't want it pointing over here to number three or five or anything like that. Now the camshaft synchronizer doesn't have a distributor cap. Instead it has a cam position sensor. And then the top, it's got a magnet. And then as this passes past that magnet, it interrupts the signal and creates the sine wave. So just like a distributor would rotate and you want the rotor pointing at number one, once it's all set all the way down in there, you want this at number one when it's all set down in there. So how do we do that? Well, when you buy a cam synchronizer, nowadays, most of them come with a synchronization tool. And if you look at it, it's got a notch for the interrupter and it will only go on here one way. If this is turned, it won't go in there. But when I rotate this around, this locks it in place. This tool then locks it in place so that the interrupter is pointing right at the exact same position. So we've got it lined up correctly. You do have to crank your engine around by hand and get number one piston at top dead center so that you're ready to stab this. Now for this next part I've come over to our engine room where we've got various engines here because this part is hard to show you actually on the truck. But this is the same kind of engine and as I turn this over the front of the engine is out here and the firewall is back here. This cam synchronizer has to go back there. It's very difficult to get the camera and explain what we're doing so I'm going to show you on here but then you can do it on the truck. Sometimes the visualization helps you understand it. If you look at the service manual, it is saying that we need to stab this so that it ends up at 15 degrees. Off of what? Off of the center line. Now be sure and refer to your service manual for your vehicle. Some of them will say that it needs to be at 60 degrees. It could even be changed on different engines. So make sure you get the right spec for your engine. Now what are we talking about 15 degrees? This isn't real clear, but it's talking about a center line that's drawn here. So to stab this synchronizer, it's just like we used to stab distributors. It needs to go down this hole into the intake. Now in this engine, we've got the upper intake valve curves and everything off so you can see so much better, but it's the same procedure. Now, it goes down inside this hole is the oil pump. The oil pump 
has a rod that comes up and needs to stick into the bottom of this. Sometimes these are shaped internally like an Allen setting, like an Allen wrench, and sometimes they're just a straight line. But you may have to rotate that to get it to actually go down into the oil pump. And when you do so, of course, these teeth are going to move. Now, when I move this without the synchronizer on it, you can see that this moves in here. I don't want that to happen. That's why we keep this tool in here to keep it all locked into position. When I've got that in on there like it's supposed to be, then when I rotate this, that does not move. I'd have to actually turn the whole thing around. So now, what are we talking about the 15 degrees? I want you to draw an imaginary line right down the center of this engine, not at the center of the engine, but the center of this hole that is mounted on the top of the engine. If you look at this diagram, If you look at this diagram, the center line we're refer referring to goes right through the hole for the camshaft. It's not the center of the head. And we want to be 15 degrees off of that when we end up. So we want to find our center line. And notice that there's an arrow pointing at the 15 degree mark. On top of the synchronizer is also an arrow. You want that pointing at the 15 degree mark. So keep in mind that we want this arrow ending up 15 degrees off of that center line. So when we push it down in there, it is going to rotate. So we need to start back a little bit. If you read in your service manual, it'll say that there is no timing marks to line this up. You kind of have to measure this by the 15 degrees. But keep in mind, as you stick that in there and these teeth line up, as they go down, this is going to rotate. So you want to start beyond 15 degrees so that as it goes down, it ends up there. So when we start this, we want to back up from 15 degrees, put it in a hole, and actually wiggle it around until it engages with the oil pump, and then take it down the rest of the way, and it will rotate, and you want it to end up at 15 degrees. Now in this case, that's not 15 degrees, so I would need to pull it back out, Rotate a little bit more, and you may have to stab it two or three times until you get it right at the 15 degree mark. So you can see it's actually pretty easy to get it off. Now how do you know 15 degrees? Well just go back to your basic math. Now if this were actually pointing back here, that would be 180 degrees out. If it was right here, that would be 90 degrees out. 45 degrees would be half of that. Now half of 45 is like 22 and a half. So we want to actually kind of be half between here and straight again and go right about to that position. Now again, there is no mark. There's nothing saying we're exactly right at 15 degrees. To some degree it's a test, it's a guess. But you want it to end up there. So when I start stabbing, I want to be back a little bit Stab it down in there so that it will rotate and then end up at 15 degrees. Then you simply tighten down your hold down bolt, put your sensor on top, this comes off, and it leaves this right in the middle where it's supposed to be. Put your sensor on top and you're ready to see if it's good. Now here's how I find the 15 degrees. I start at the center line which is 180, half of that is the 90, half of that is 45, and half of that is 22 and a half. So I start stabbing it at the 22 and a half mark, and when it rotates and comes to an end, it's usually right around the 15 degree mark. And as you're beginning to do this, or if it's your first time, you may have to actually stab it two or three times just to get it right. But you can do it. As you hopefully you can see here, there's not a difficult process to this. The most difficult thing is getting into it, because remember we'll have the intake over here, the firewall's back here, so you're, you're kind of reaching over and you're doing this like this. It's not easy, but you can do it. Now I'm going to tell you something that you won't read in the service manual unless you read closely in between the lines and then you'll see it. Here it is. As long as your engine has number one at top dead center when you stab the synchronizer, it really doesn't matter where you stab it. The reference to 15 degrees is simply so that the 
wire harness on the position sensor which mounts on top is pointing in a place where there won't be any stress on the wires. There's no need to use a protractor or any other method to try and stab it exactly at 15 degrees. Now let me explain. When the engine is put together, the crankshaft and the camshafts are mechanically timed together. They're held in place with the timing chain. So as long as the timing chain is intact, the relationship between the cams and the cranks will never change. The crankshaft has a missing tooth on the pulse ring that is picked up by the crank sensor that reports to the computer and is used for referencing number one and for RPM. Now the camshaft has teeth on it, but as you can see, there's no missing teeth, nothing to index. The synchronizer has teeth on the end of it as well, and as you can see, there are no missing teeth on it either, nothing to index. The camshaft is down inside the block. Then you insert the synchronizer and the teeth just simply mesh up. They line up exactly and it's a direct correlation. Every time the camshaft rotates, so does the synchronizer. The camshaft makes two revolutions for every one revolution of the crankshaft. One for the compression stroke and one for the exhaust. It really doesn't matter which one is on because the synchronizer that has the sensor in it will create a sine wave that is the same for every revolution. It's just repetitive and it doesn't matter which stroke it's on. It's just a continuous sine wave with no interruptions or identifying marks. Now the service manual states that the timing is not adjustable. So what's all this reference to 15 degrees about? Now back in the days of distributors we had timing marks and specs. The crank and the cam were all held in place the same with the timing chain. We would rotate the engine to top dead center and then we would stab the distributor with the rotor pointing at the number one spark plug. Now if we weren't really close or close enough we could actually rotate the distributor until our timing marks lined up to be right on spec. So we've got this degree, 10 degrees, embedded in our thinking. But now that the engines are electronically controlled, there's no need for timing marks. The crankshaft and camshaft are all still held in place with the timing chain. As long as we're at top dead center on number one, when we stab this synchronizer, as long as we're using the alignment tool, which keeps the interrupter in the correct position when we stab it, our 15 degrees simply pertains to the position of the sensor on top. So now with the synchronizer stabbed and the engines at top dead center, every time that crankshaft rotates, so is the cam synchronizer. And it's going to interrupt the signal and make a sine wave that is simply repetitive over and over again. So the critical point is that the engine be at number one top dead center. And then you stab the synchronizer as long as the tool is in place and pointing around 15 degrees it doesn't matter where you stab it. The 15 degrees is simply so that when you take the tool off and put your position sensor on, the connector for the position sensor will be aimed at the right place so that when you plug it in there will be no stress on the harness or the wires. So if you read between the lines, the service manual does not tell us where to stab the synchronizer exactly because it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that the engine be at top dead center and you use the alignment tool on the synchronizer.